What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use the add-on Fluent Materializer in order to start adding surface imperfections and wear to a model inside a Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So you can download this add-on by going to TheCGEssentials.com slash Fluent Materializer um, if you want to follow along. And so basically what we want to do is we want to take this crate that I've downloaded from Sketchfab, and we want to start adding some wear to it, right? Because it looks a little bit too perfect. Like it looks like brand new. Um, there's no scratches or anything like that. It's just a little bit unrealistic for what you'd see in the real world. So if you want to follow along, you can download the Sci-Fi Crate One from Not a Real Studio um, from Sketchfab and follow along. But what we want to do is we want to do a few different things, right? The first thing we want to do is we want to take the overall surface of this object and we want to add some imperfections to it. So maybe some dents or some scratches. We'll kind of play around with the different effects. And so the first thing we need to do with Fluent Materializer is we need to jump over into shading mode. And so usually what I'll do is I'll split my screen kind of like this. So I have my shaders down below and then I've got my, uh, my scene up above. And what we want to do is we want to switch over into material preview mode right now. And so the first thing we want to do is inside of our scene, so we want to go into our scene settings, we want to make sure we've checked the box for ambient occlusion. So that's going to be really important even if we're not in rendered mode um, because that's going to affect the way that our edges look. Um, notice when you toggle this on, you're getting some kind of shading in here. But if you remember, the way that Fluent Materializer works is it basically works by adding different layers to your object, right? So. Um, what it does, and I'm going to tap the N key in order to pop this up. I'm just going to click on the Fluent option over here. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to tap the F key and just add a new layer, right? So we've got our new layer right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to have that layer plug into our principled BSDF. So I'm just going to drag this. I'm just going to drag nodes into the associated sections right here. Notice what that did is that changed the color of this object because we're now driving the color using this setting over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a darker green, kind of like we had before. Maybe we'll lighten it up just a bit, something like this maybe. Um, so now this is driving our material. But what we want to do is we want to add some surface imperfections to this object. And so the way that we're going to add surface imperfections is we want to come in here and we want to look in our imperfections group in our library. So if you click on this, notice how there's a number of different surface imperfections in here. And notice that they vary in density from heavy to light. Um, what we want to do is we just want to add, um, we'll start by adding some scratches. Maybe this scratches times three. And so the way that we want to do this is we just want to take these scratches and we just want to drag them into this layer right here. So all we have to do is just drag our normals right here. So notice how we drag the normal over into our normal. This is going to take a second to compile our shaders. And then if you look at this, notice what you're going to see everywhere this green material is, is you're going to see scratches. And probably a better place to look at it would be on the top right here. But notice how all this is doing is this is just adding a normal map that creates the scratches. And you can adjust these by adjusting your seed or your scale. So notice how actually if you make the scale bigger, the scratches are going to get smaller. So we can add scratches to this object really quick, right? So that was pretty easy to do. So that's just driving our main color, no big deal. Well now, let's say that we wanted to add something else in here. Like for example, let's say that we wanted just a little bit of paint to be chipped off and like a gray material to show through, right? Well. We want to leave our scratches as is, but then what we need to do is we need to create a mix layer. And so all the mix layer is going to do is that's going to allow us to set, um, basically we're going to mix between two different colors. So if I tap the F key and I click on the mix layers, that's going to add a mix layer right here. And at the moment, and you have to give it a second to compile the shaders, at the moment you're going to notice that nothing's really changed, right? Well the reason for that is because this is currently set with a mix or a mask of zero. Notice how if I drag this to the right, it's gonna show more of color two. If I drag it to the left, it's gonna show more of color one. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this so that a gray material shows through with scratches. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set our color for what's gonna show through, right? Actually, let's leave that for a second. So what I wanna do right now 
is I want to set this up where we get kind of a banged up look that's showing some paint through. So in this case, maybe we'll go with, let's go with the option for dented. And so we're gonna add a dented node right here. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna drag our mask from that node into the mask right here. So basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna use the dented tool in order to set where the colors show through. And notice how right now we've got this kind of like orange color showing through. That's because this is set to orange, but what we wanna do what we want to do in this situation is we actually want to set the color to like a darker gray, right? So we're going to drag this to the middle right here. Then we're going to bring this down. And so what that's going to do is that's going to make it look like you've got a metal material below, but then you've got the paint basically flaking off on our object, just like this. So you can see how this is looking more realistic already. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to add some grunge to this. Right, so what we wanna do is we wanna make it look like maybe there was some like liquid that kinda of like came down here and stained the material, something like that. And so what we wanna do in this situation is we just wanna add another mix layer node in order to do that. So to do that, we're just gonna tap the F key right here. We're just gonna add a new mix layer node. We're just gonna drag it in the middle here and we're gonna reset up these nodes. I think with Node Wrangler, there's actually a faster way to do this, but we'll just drag these in manually for right now. So I'm just gonna drag my normals in here. Then we're just gonna drag our results over here like this. And so what I wanna do, right, is with this mix layer, I wanna do something similar to what we did over here with the masking, but we wanna use a different mask, right? So in this case, the mask that we wanna use is going to be in the grunges and specifically, we want one of these grunges that looks like it's coming off of the bottom of something. So we want this grunge gradient. So I'm gonna click on this node and then click on the button for a grunge gradient. That's gonna add a grunge gradient node over here, which I can then drag the mask from here to here. So notice what that does is that gives you a grunge that looks like it's coming off the bottom of your box, right? And you can adjust like the seed of that. So you can adjust the randomization of the map. You can adjust the scale of the map, all those different things using a slider over here. In this situation though, I think we can leave it where it is at the moment. But the first thing we want is we want this coming off of the top, not off of the bottom. So the way that we can adjust that, so we just want to adjust the X rotation so that it has a value of 180. And then you can adjust the height off the ground by adjusting the Z value, right? So if I make the Z value smaller like this, so if I hold the shift key and drag it, for example, notice what you're gonna get is you're gonna get this, uh, this effect coming from the top instead of the bottom. But we've got a little bit of a problem because I don't necessarily want this on the lid. I just want this on the box, right? Coming off of like right here, as if liquid had kind of like built up in here and then came down the edge of our box. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a really simple thing. We're just gonna come in here and we're just going to basically create a new material for the box. Cause notice how right now, if you look over in your material properties, these both have the same material associated with them. Well, all we need to do to change that is we just wanna come in here and we just wanna add a new material. So I've got my box selected and I'm just gonna click the plus button right here. And we're just gonna add, in this case, we're just gonna click on the drop down and we're gonna select lid zero. And so right now, this is just a copy of the material that's sitting in here, it's not doing anything. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna take this lid zero and we just wanna rename it something like box material. Right, and notice how when we did that, it changed the other one as well. That's because this wasn't a unique material. So before we do that, select this, and notice how there's a button right here. This is displaying the number of users of the data. That basically means there's three different places where this is being used. Well, for this one, I just wanna click on the three right here, and I just wanna make that a unique material. And then I can rename that box, like this. So now you've got your lid material and your box material. And so we just wanna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna tap the A key and I'm just gonna click on the assign. And all that's doing is that's assigning the box material to the box. Notice how the lid material is still the lid. Well, for the lid material, all we wanna do is we wanna delete out this grunge gradient, right? Like we don't necessarily want the lid to have that associated with it. 
So we might add like a different grunge up there or something like that in a minute because um, it does look a little bit odd where it's super clean like this. So we'll mess with that in a second. But for now, what we want to do is we want to go back into our box material. We just want to set this so that it has a white material showing through like this. Or you know, we probably want it to be white um, because we do want it to look like something kind of built up on the box right here. So now we've got this material on the bottom of our box and then let's jump back to the top of our box and let's just add a different grunge map to that one. So we're just going to go, go to grunges and in this case maybe we'll go with like the grunge 03. And we'll just take that, drag our result into our mask. It's going to take a second to compile the shader and then we're just going to set this with a white material like this. And so one other thing we might think about doing because our handle for example looks a little bit too strong is we might think about coming in here and doing something similar with a handle. So just adding like uh, if I tap the F key and do like a smart shader right here with two layers that'll just go ahead and set this up but we can just drag these in real quick. We'll set our base material as a gray and maybe add some scratches maybe drag our normal into this as well. But we could use this to make the handle look beat up and then we could do the same thing over here um, with this kind of stretch right here. So with this piece right here. So and again, that's gonna be pretty easy. We're just gonna add a, go with a smart shader again. And in this case, I'm gonna make this kind of a metallic gray as well. So we'll drag our metallic over, but then we'll just add a similar, we'll just add something similar over here with that same grunge map. So we'll bring the grunge map in, bring the gradient over, and we'll just bring that mask down into our mask over here. Let's bring our Z up a little bit and we'll call that good. All right, so if you wanna download Fluent Materializer, you can do that at the link on this page. Um, if you have any ideas for anything you'd like to see with this add-on, I'm just having a lot of fun with it, so I love making tutorials for this add-on. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.